Alright, okay, so hello dears. <laughs> Ayan, hello, hello, good day. Okay, so welcome again to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in clinical parasitology. And for this lecture, what we're going to discuss now are the different parasites that we can obtain or we can acquire from our fecal smears. Alright, so our previous lesson, our previous video, our, our or our previous pre-recorded lecture was on the preparation of the fecal smears. Now, this time, what we're going to talk about are the parasites <laughs> that we can recover from these smears, all right? Especially from your direct wet mount, your DFS and the Antonis, all right? Um, yeah, medyo, no, disclaimer lang, the information here are quite baka TMI, no? <laughs> so, well, yeah, while I was making, no, chika lang light, while I was making this PowerPoint, at the back of my mind, I was thinking na, Mark, what if it's too much, no? <laughs> what if I'm giving out too much information for a laboratory class, like for a laboratory presentation? Um, but then again, at the back of the, but then again, I justified na, sige na lang. <laughs> because, dili ko katulog po, guys, so dili na ako ni ma-share, no? If makachika ko. Uh, because most of the information here are, will also be repeated in your lecture. Uh, actually, ang information here, medyo, um, lecture na siya. <laughs> for your lecture class, no? Uh, for our laboratory class na lang, what we're really looking after is the, the appearances of their eggs no? under the microscope. All right? Because again, that's our goal for you to know kung siyang appearance. All right? Now, again, I've included some lang. Of course, not all. No? Kaya di maputa lecture class, yes. Uh, pinapaubaya ko na yan kay Ma'am Bernal, the rest of the other parasites. Uh, what I included here lang kay some of the most common na pwede ninyong makita when you, when you go to your internship. All right, and as you work as medtech uh, puhon in the future. All right, so again, major TMI. So I'll just try my best to um, discuss this slowly. All right, <laughs> and yeah, that's the beauty of pre-recorded lectures. But at least you can pause, no, if major too much na, and then rewatch kung asa to na part ang medyo dili klaro. All right, so again, we're going to talk about the parasites in fecal smears. Again, focusing on the helminths or the worms. So muna siya kung background ang mga jarja, yes, ato ang bestie. Uh, since dili na to siya discuss dire. So, siya na lang akong na background. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Again, these are some of the parasites that you can obtain or recover from your fecal smears. Alright. Okay. Now, um, again, from your fecal smears pa lang, from your DFS, the Antonis, Katothe, Katocats, there's a variety, a wide variety of parasites that you can recover from protozoans to helminths. Okay? Especially those that cause intestinal disorders. So, ang ato na makuha or the parasites that we can recover from our fecal smears are those parasites that affect your intestines, okay? Uh, there are some parasites that can be seen in the fecal smears if the infection is already disseminated, alright? Or like, it's spread to a lot of organs na. But primarily, okay, the parasites that we can really obtain from our fecal smears are the parasites that are coming or that cause disease in your intestines, okay? Or in your digestive tract, alright? So, that's the parasites that we are going to focus um, in this particular uh, lecture. And again, we're focusing on helminths. Because again, um, I won't discuss na the protozoa. Because again, I've, in, I've shared some medically important protozoa na in our discussion in hay infusion. And those protozoa that I've, dis that I've shared, Entamoeba histolytica, um, except for Negleria, you, uh, Entamoeba histolytica, your Jarja, and your Balantidium coli, these are some of the protozoa that can be recovered from your fecal smears. Because these three, Entamoeba isolitica, Jarja, and your Balantidium coli, these are protozoa that infect your intestines. Okay? Trichomonas is re reproductive, diba? Genital tract. And your Negleria is in the CNS. So you cannot recover that from fecal smears. Okay? Alright. So again, we're focusing on the helminths. Again, um, I've already discussed or introduced the word helminths, no? Uh, but again, just a brief description. Helminths comes from the Greek word helminths which means worm. Ayan, so very easy. Worm, okay. Multicellular, meta, zoa, by the name itself, meta, marami, many, all right, zoa, cell, so multicellular. Large organisms that are generally visible. So generally, they are visible in the naked eye. But some are not, okay? All right, there are still mga uh, worms that cannot be seen in the naked eye. Example, your filarial worms, di ba? Your blood nematodes, the worms that are found in your blood, they cannot be seen in the naked eye. Okay, all right. Ayan. Uh, you also have, like protozoa, helminths can be free living, all right? Like, malinaw na siya nagpuyo sa environment, like peacefully existing in the environment, or parasitic when needed. So, when it becomes, or when it is introduced into a host, it now becomes parasitic, or it can now cause infection. Okay? All right. 
And again, three main groups of helminths that are considered human parasites. Uh, number one is your nematodes, which are, of course, also known as your roundworms. Next, you have your trematodes or digenia, its other name. Trematodes or digenia, your flukes. And lastly, your cestodes, your tapeworms. All right. Now, we will go individually with the different uh, groups, all right? And I'll be sharing some parasites, okay, in each group and their infective stage, life cycle, similar to what I've discussed in the protozoa, okay, with their infective stage, um, their mode of transmission, and all that, okay? All right. So, again, medyo TMI, but again, I'll do my best to discuss this properly. All right. All right, so we'll start first with the nematodes. Of course, the very first is our very popular... Ah, joke. All right, sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, we'll start first with the first group pala, nematodes. Okay, sorry. Medyo na-shocked ako. Wala ko na-orient sa presentation. All right, so we'll start first with the nematodes. Some of their ano lang, characteristics. So first is they are elongated, cylindrical, unsegmented worms. So elongated, cylindrical. Sorry, guys. Hindi talaga ako marunong mag-draw. Basta it looks like a worm, ganun. And unsegmented, meaning the surface of uh, the worms are smooth. Walang mga lines, walang segments. Okay? Alright. With tapering ends. Next, they have a complete reproductive system. The life cycle consists of the egg, larva, and adult. Okay. Ayan. So, we'll start first with the egg, of course. Your egg. And next, you have the larva. Okay, larva is parang teenager stage, pero worm na yung appearance, okay? Pero it's not yet fully matured, parang siyang baby stage, okay? And then of course, the adult. Alright, now your larva guys, some of your worms have, or most of your worms have two types. You have the L1, and, excuse me, L1, your rhabditiform, and your L3, your filariform, Okay. Your L1 is the feeding stage na larva, okay? And your L3 is the non-feeding stage, okay? And later on in our discussion in nematodes, you will discover that the L3, some of your nematodes, some of your roundworms, uh, the L3, filariform larva, is the infective stage, okay? Later, you'll know kung sino yan, okay? Sino yung mga worms na yan, alright, okay? So generally, that's the life cycle of your nematodes, they are provided with separate sexes, meaning uh, there is one male worm and then there's a female worm. So they are separate, okay? So one worm talaga is, gender niya is male, then the, the, another worm is another, has another gender which is female. Ganun, alright? I don't know if na by LGBTQ some mga worms. <laughs> alright, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okay, alright. But some may be parthenogenetic, alright? So we'll discuss parthenogenetic later. What does it, what does it mean? Okay, and... Female nematodes, mga babae, mga, mga eta girl na <laughs> roundworms, they can lay eggs. Um, if they only lay eggs, they are known as oviparous. Ovi, by the name itself, ovi, stands for ova, no egg. Parous, meaning laying, alright? So oviparous. Some may lay eggs containing the larva already. So ovi, viviparous, ah, joke, viviparous, only the larva pala. Some parasites, they lay only the larva. Immediately, example, uh, nematodes of trichinella spiralis, okay? This is found in your muscles, okay? Trichinella spiralis. Uh, they don't lay eggs, alright? Um, they lay immediately the larva, alright? So they are known as viviparous. And lastly, some lay eggs that contain the larva that's known as ovo viviparous. So I think na discuss, I think this was discussed in your lecture na by Mam Bernal, the different terms, no? An introduction to para, so, okay, alright? So, baka review na lang. Alright, okay. Now, here are some of your worms, of course. You have the Ascaris adult and the Trichuris adult. So, as you can see, diba, other name of Trichuris, ano ngayon, press the buzzer, other name of Trichuris, whipworm. Ayan. So, as you can see, this is the um, adult form of Trichuris, diba? Yeah. So, this is the mouth, and then, ito yung sa, sa, sa end niya, okay? This is the end. Now, as you can see, it looks like a whip, Marshag Latigo. That's why it's also known as a whipworm. Okay, no, those are the adults. Alright, now we go on to the first <laughs> parasite under nematodes, and that is your Ascaris lumbricoides, the very, very popular, the bestie ng lahat, again, as mentioned na ako. Uh, common name, again, the giant intestinal roundworm. Our infective stage is embryonated egg, and the diagnostic stage are the ova found in stool, may be fertilized or unfertilized, embryonated or unembryonated. So later, uh, we'll discuss the different eggs. Okay, alright. Mode of transmission is, of course, the ingestion of the embryonated egg, fecal-oral root, okay, 
And the larva exhibits heart to lung migration. Ayan, later. Sige, so again, we'll look into that. And it causes what we call Leuwefler syndrome or Ascaris pneumonitis. So the larva of the Ascaris can cause pneumonia symptoms in your lungs. And that is known as your Leuwefler syndrome. Okay. Now the eggs, it may be either fertile or infertile. So when you say fertile, it is fertilized by a male. No? Ang male o females nag you know, <laughs> they underwent sex and then a fertilized ang egg or inseminated by the males, alright? And infertile, wala. Alright. So the eggshell in itself consists of three layers. You have the innermost vitellin, lipoidal, or lecithin layer, which is not found in unfertilized egg. You have a middle glycogen layer and the outermost mammalation or albuminoid uh, coat or your corticate, corticated layer that is made up of albumin for protection. Now, both your fertilized and unfertilized eggs can be decorticated or corticated. Sigil. In the next slide, we'll look into that. What are the meaning of those? All right. Sa po man ako think. All right. Ascaris, yes. Fecal oral. Okay. Embryonated egg. All right. And heart to lung migration, don't forget. All right. So, we'll discuss the heart to lung migration sa life cycle niya. All right. Okay. Now, we go now to the eggs of Ascaris because, again, this is very common. No? Ascaris. Nubricoides is considered to be the most common, most common intestinal nematode uh, in man. Okay, and it's very, very common in the Philippines, as in very common. All right, okay. And we'll start first with the unfertilized eggs of Ascaris. So this is the appearance. So you have here, it could be corticated or decorticated. So when you say corticated, it has this mammalation. Kabante man yung mga lumps, no? This is the albumin mammalation, okay? Mammalation. Mammalation, na, co na coating, all right? And it's made up of albumin, all right? So when the egg has this mammalation cover, it's known as corticated, all right? But if it's free of that, as you can see, wala siyang kanin mga lumps, then that is called decorticated. Now, this is un unfertilized. So take note of the shape. It's elliptical or oblong in shape. Narrower, no? Narrower, paganern. Narrower and longer. And aside from that, it has a thinner shell. So thin ang kanyang shell, okay, with an irregular coating, an irregular coating of albumin. Again, unfertilized egg can be both corticated or decorticated. Now, what do you mean by corticated? If it contains this albumin layer. So kabantay mo aning bumps, bumps, yes. That is the albumin layer, the coating, all right, the outside. Diba? Recall the three layers. You have the inner, um, the inner uh, vitellin layer, diba, sa inner and then the middlemost glycogen layer, okay, ito, and then the outermost albumin layer, all right? So again, if the egg has that albumin layer, uh, mammalated coating, then it's called corticated. But if wala, decorticated, all right? And both for unfertilized and the fertilized eggs can be corticated or decorticated. All right, now again, take note of the shape oblong or um, elliptical ang shape ng un unfertilized egg ng Ascaris. Whereas the fertilized egg of Ascaris, ayan, it's more rounded and it has a chitin shell or chitin, chitin, chitin shell. <laughs> it is sandwiched between the embryo and the albuminous layer which again serves as a protection for the embryo. The mammalation, the albumin layer and the chitin layer is all, are all for protection of the embryo. And again, decorticated, the eggs lack the outer mammalated albuminous coating, and it's always bile stained or yellow, golden yellow in, golden brown in color, sorry. So, ayan, so this is your decorticated fertilized egg. So, as you can see, uh, clear lang, wala tong mga bumps, bumps, or lumps, no? And again, it's spherical, rounded in uh, shape, okay? So, this is the developing embryo, um, unicellular embryo. And you have kanisha, the chitin shell. All right. Whereas, of course, your decorticated uh, fertilized egg, ayan, the usual appearance. So you have already an outer, parang usually dark brown with lumps, lumps. Ayan. So this is now corticated fertilized egg of Ascaris. Okay? All right. Because again, we're, the Ascaris eggs have so many appearances, mga All right. Okay. Compared to the other nematodes. All right. Ayan. So that's why we're really. Um, Looking into the different types. Okay. All right. So again, this is fertilized. Both of them are fertilized. But again, this one is decorticated, the, the upper one, because again, it doesn't have the cores, no? Or na mga lumps. 
na albuminous layer, whereas this one is the corticated fertilized egg of Ascaris. Because again, it has the lumps, no? the albuminous layer. Alright, now again, take note on sa shape sa imuhang, um, shape sa imuhang unfertilized. Yes, that's the shape of unfertilized Ascaris. It's oval in shape. Alright, please take note. Okay. Uh, it could be corticated or decorticated. Similar again with your fertilized eggs. Spherical jud ang shape, but it could be corticated or decorticated. Alright? Okay, so that's for Ascaris. Maraming eggs ang Ascaris. <laughs> it has a lot of appearance, so that's why um, we discussed the eggs good of Ascaris. Okay? Alright, so I hope na gets lang. Okay. Alright, so I hope you're familiar with the appearance. Ha? Because um, in a specimen, you can see both of this, pede, corticated, decorticated. You can also see unfertilized eggs, na, uh, corticated or decorticated. So you can see these types of eggs in your specimen. So it's important that you know the difference, okay, between these eggs. <laughs> Daming eggs, yes, okay. <laughs> okay, now again, when you say fertilized, meaning there is an embryo that is ongo uh, that is um, uh, growing, no, uh, in the in the egg. Where, uh, whereas if it's un unfertilized, meaning it's nothing. Walang embryo na nag grow. It's just a mass. No? A protoplasm lang. Walang embryo na laman. Okay? There's no embryo inside the shell. Okay? Alright. That's for Ascaris. Now, we go now to your life cycle of Ascaris so that you will really understand. So again, the mode of transmission of Ascaris is through ingestion of embryonated eggs. Now, where do the eggs come from? Your Ascaris eggs, they embryonate, meaning they develop into embryos within the soil. So, sa soil. Ganan sila Warm, moist soil. Ayan. Warm, moist soil. They like basa-basa na soil na inip. So when this um, uh, condition is met, the fertilized egg of embryo of the Ascaris, when it is laid in the land, from feces, when it is deposited on land, on soil, yeah, warm, moist, the fertilized egg will now become embryonated, meaning the embryo then develops further. All right? Now, this uh, embryonated egg is important to be embryonated. Huh? The egg should be embryonated for it to cause infection because if ang humans, if nakuha niya, if what they got is just an unfertilized egg, okay, it's not fertilized or it's not embryonated, then it would not cause any infection. Because again, unfertilized man ang egg na nakuha sa humans. So there's no embryo that's going on or that's, that's growing. So there's no worms that will be produced. Okay? Alright. Now, uh, again, embryonation. Alright? And then, of course, embryonated eggs, it's important. That's why the infective stage of Ascaris is embryonated eggs. It's important that the eggs contain embryo. Because again, that would ensure that there are worms that will grow. Okay? Because again, if the humans, what the, humans, what the human host got is just the un unfertilized egg, then it would not cause any infection. All right? It will just die. Okay? Or it will just be eliminated by the body. All right? Okay, so again, from the soil, ayan, so of course, and then establishes in this large intestine. Now, wh where does the uh, heart to lung migration occur? Now, in the small intestine, um, once the eggs hatch, the larva goes out, and then it penetrates, okay, yahang buslutan, ang intestinal mucosa, and it goes to the liver, and then to the portal circulation, and then goes to the lungs, okay? In the lungs, the larva will become, will molt, molt, meaning it, it, um, it, upgrades, okay? <laughs> or parang it matures in a way. And then after, that's heart to lungs. So, from heart, from the lungs, balik to the heart, and then heart to the lungs. Ana. And then after, once the larva um, reach the lungs, no, it will also climb to the throat. So, that's itchy. Alright? So, mag, the patient will cough. <laughs> and then, the larva will then go back to the intestine. Okay? And then, the larva will then develop into adults na in the intestine. Okay? I hope not gets lang. In a nutshell, that's the life cycle. So the purpose of the heart to lung migration is for the larva to mas mo achieve siya og um, uh, adult stage or mas mo mature siya. Because again, um, the heart and lungs are full of oxygen. So they need that. So they need to be oxygenated. They need the oxygen. And through that oxygen, they can uh, further develop. All right. So in a nutshell, that's the life cycle of Ascaris. Again, fecal oral. So the soil, no? Um, there could be feces there that from humans ba or from animals, yeah, it could be. And then your children play, you have children, mga babies or whatever. Ikaw mismo, you touch the soil and then you 
didn't wash your hands like that or gikan kag nangilo <laughs> nalibang no wala ka nagwash og hands so that could be and then you put your mouth in your hands while eating then and your hands contain the embryonated eggs then it can cause infection again emphasis ha kailangan jud ang eggs kay embryonated because walay pulos as mentioned if unfertilized imo makuha kay it will not cause infection Okay, wow. So, ang, ang target natin is infection. Ang target ni Asker is pala. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> now, for the next video, we'll go, we're going to continue with the rest of the nematodes. So many chika, no? But sige lang, I hope ma-appreciate and you're malingaw mo. Alright, so that's for Askeris. Maraming chika si Askeris. Again, more info will be given in your lecture. Okay? But again, for our goal lang talaga is we need to know the appearances of their eggs. Okay? And just, I'm supplementing with some information na din. All right, that will, you will use in the lecture later when Ma'am Bernal discusses that. Okay, para at least, pag mag-discuss si Ma'am Bernal, press the buzzer na. Ah, oh, di ba? Okay, all right. So again, I'll see you in the second part of the, uh, excuse me, pre-recorded lecture. We'll continue with the nematodes.